Hello and welcome back to Bits and Bobs. Now in today's video I will teach you how to identify if your coins are rare and valuable, or if they're just normal common types. For instance, on screen now are two 1893 sixpences. One of them is worth about £80, one of them is worth thousands. But can you tell which is which? Well, by the end of the video you should know what to do. There are four main factors to look for. The date of the coin, is it a rare date? The condition, is it a good condition coin? Any varieties or errors on the coin? So these are the four steps, and we'll begin with the date or the mintage, looking for the rarity first. One way to find this out is having a look in one of your coin books or catalogues, if you have one, and there are other ways, don't worry. You can look up any coin in these books and catalogues and find the coin and its mintage. So if we zoom in here, we can see mintages here of some 30s three princes, and finding out that the 45 is the rarest one, and then became even rarer after they were all melted down. And also if we looked here for some six princes, you can see there, and find out if the coin is rarer than average, that's the main thing to look for. If you don't know what qualifies as a rare mintage, look for if it's rarer than average. If you don't have a coin book or catalogue, I would recommend the Online Coin Club as the best website on online place to find out the mintage. For instance, an 1865 shilling, what is the mintage? Well, it has a whole list here of every coin, every date, and every mintage, and you can see there, 5.6 to 1, 9 million were made, and you can also see by looking to the others of the era, it is a fairly average mintage of the time, so it's not a common or rare date. That's what we have to look for, as I say, is it rarer than average? And of course, a rarer date, rarer than average, will be more pricey, more valuable, so that will be more of a key date to find for collectors looking to get every date, therefore the harder ones, the rarer ones, being the more tricky ones to get, commanding a premium on the second-hand market and when they're for sale. So there's how to see if your coin is a rare coin and has a low mintage, therefore being a desirable date for collectors. And now we'll move on to the condition, a huge factor in price. Obviously, better condition coins will sell for more money. Here we have again two 1893 sixpences, and I'm sure you can guess which one is more valuable this time. That's right, the left, of course, as is in much better condition. On the right there, you can see barely any details. It's very worn. Now, most price listings online for a coin will give you the value in a sort of spectrum there of the grades. VG, F, VF, EF, A, UNC, UNC. What does it mean? You can see it gets more pricey, the better the grade. So how do we determine the grade of a coin if you don't know? Well, here is a short guide roughly how to tell the grade and value, therefore, of your coin by what condition the coin is in. The best condition is uncirculated or UNC, and uncirculated coins are in new condition as issued by the mint retaining their brilliance, but possibly displaying a few imperfections, maybe scratches or so, on the die, but being looking brand new. Extremely fine, or EF, are the coins that show minimal marks or faint evidence of circulation, and these imperfections only really show up on close examination of the coin in question. The next grade a bit lower down is very fine, or VF. Now, very fine coins have limited evidence of wear on the raised surfaces of the coin, but have experienced only minimal circulation still, so still a good condition coin. The fine grade, or F, so a fine coin has entered circulation and displays considerable wear to the raised surfaces on the design. That's sort of the average grade of a fine coin that's been used and worn back in the day. Coins worse than that, like this one here, will either be a good grade, or more likely for this one here, a poor grade. And usually good and poor grade coins, the very worn ones, will be sort of the lower end of prices, um, and even if it's a rare date, it won't be too expensive. As people looking to get rare key dates for their collection don't want one that worn, they would want a good example of a rare coin. Now you can see here in the books as well, if you had catalogues, they give you the same listing there of prices. And if you can find out the grade of your coin and know the rarity, then when looking at one of these sort of price listings here, you should be able to tell fairly confidently the rough price bracket you should be looking for if you're wishing to sell it or just to know the price that it is valued at currently. So the next thing to look for on your coin to determine the value, the true value of your exact coin are the varieties. I will now show you the two varieties as an example of the 1957 halfpenny. So here we can see the common variety of one and it's on screen there, with the usual design of the Golden Hind ship to the reverse, and here is the rarer and more expensive, valuable variety of the coin. Now can you tell the difference? Maybe not if you don't know about it, as often varieties are very subtle. Here's what to look for for this coin specifically. Now you can see to the left there, the common variety, the waves under the boat are quite rough. There's very raised waves on the coin, but if we look to the more rare one, we can see the waves are much more calm, it's more of a calm sea with flattened out and less raised waves. So there's the two varieties there, the common one has the raised wave, the rough sea, and the rare one has a calm, flattened out sea, making it a more valuable and collectible variety of this coin. But this is just one variety. How do you tell what a variety is? Well, the definition is a variety is a coin that has characteristics specific to the die pair that struck it. So most collectible varieties can thus be tracked to a set of dies. For instance, a die with a rough sea or a calm sea that makes a variety for a certain type of coin. So how do you identify variety on a coin and tell if your coin is a variety or a normal or if it's rare or not, how do you tell that from your coin? 
Well, the first thing to do, the very easy thing to do, is just Google the coin in question with the word varieties after it. And you can see here for this 1935 sixpence, of which there are no varieties, no listings there are coming up with varieties. However, the 1860 penny, with the varieties there in the search, does have varieties. There are varieties known, and you can see here the first listing is an article all about the varieties of this coin. So then you can look deeper into it, you can research the links, you can look in your book as well, they'll list all the varieties. And if you find out the coin does have varieties, then you can look further into it. And if not, then you know it's already fine, unless it has an error, the fourth point to look for. Now, errors are very similar to varieties, but are often rarer and unique. Varieties are meant to happen, but as soon as an error is noticed on a die, then that die will be stopped being used, and therefore making the error coins much rarer usually than the varieties. Now, we do have a video already about rare and valuable error coins you may have, listing tons and tons of most common errors that you could find. But if it's not on that video, how would you identify that your coin is an error? Well, let's go through the basics. So step one, a very easy method, is just to look at a picture of the coin. So let's say, hypothetically, that this is the coin you found in your change. Oh look, an Olympic in my change, I wonder if it's rare. Well here is your coin, and now you look up a picture to see if this coin has any errors on it. So now we'll Google search a picture of the Olympic Aquatic Swimming 50p, and we can see here is the picture. Now did you notice a difference? That's right, there was a difference. You can see the usual one there has no lines over the swimmer's face, but your one, hypothetically you found, you'd be very lucky if you did, is a rare error with lines over the swimmer's face, and this is then an error coin that you have luckily found, and you can further look into. So step two, or method two, is to look for obvious mistakes, and this is the most trivial way to find an error. As we can see here, this coin is clearly an error. There, there's a massive chunk of sort of coppery gold colour on the side, not meant to happen. This coin again, clearly an error, with a huge mistake happening there in the striking process. Now we can do some extra checks, this is method three, extra checks to our coin if we are a little bit suspicious, whether it's an error or how it's meant to be realistically. For instance, a man weighed a 5p, a normal looking 5p as you can see there, but it turned out to be slightly off weight. This is because it was struck onto a Fijian coin blank, therefore being a little bit off weight and being an error, the wrong blank was used for the striking, therefore making a rare error 5p. So the key is, if you suspect anything is off, always double check your coins to ensure that it's how it's meant to be. And of course four, this kind of applies to the whole thing, ask an expert if your coin is rare. So if you live near a coin or antique shop, or not too far away from one you can drive down, if you're really in doubt, you can ask some experts there and they will be able to help you. Equally, you can also look online into forums, coin collecting forums, and sort of collecting in antique forums. Now you can post a picture there and they could very well help you identify your coin. There's often many people there who are more than happy to help you identify your coin and see if it's a rare, valuable coin that you found. And so there we go. Please do comment down below any other tips you have on how to identify the value of your coins, whether it's an error, a rarity, or just a random coin that you want to know the value of. Please do comment down below and help out with any tips. And of course, as well, please do subscribe to the channel if you've learned something new and enjoyed. Thank you for watching as well, and we'll see you again soon for some more coins in the future on Bits and Bobs. Bye for now.